Again, thanks for joining us for HFA's first webinar of 2023. We're really excited to present isometric exercises and gentle movement. Jeanette, can we have the next slide, please? Thank you. HFA was founded in 1994. We're primarily an advocacy organization in our inception, and now we work to assist, educate, and support people in the bleeding disorders community. Included in that is our monthly educational webinar, as well as our annual meeting happening in April, which you'll hear about at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. None of this would be possible without our funders. So we just wanted to take a minute to thank our, our sponsors, Santa Fe Genzyme, Takeda, Biomarin, CVS in particular. Um, and we also wanted to thank Nancy, who has joined us from Oregon to be our presenter tonight. Nancy is the Associate Professor of Pediatrics in the School of Medicine at the Oregon Health and Sciences University in Portland. As a physical therapist, she works full-time in their hemophilia center and has over 15 years of experience in the bleeding disorders community, serving people across their lifespan. Her expertise includes pediatric chronic pain, and she is a board-certified pediatric clinic specialist. She's active in supporting the Oregon Pacific Northwest Bleeding Disorder Foundation with educational content for a variety of programs, and Nancy is a frequent speaker for HFA. And one of my favorite things about Nancy is she has the best mantras. So mm -hmm. while you're listening, be sure to hear for those. So I will stop talking and give it over to you, Nancy. As I said, any questions about tech stuff, you can put in the chat. Any questions for Nancy, please put those into the Q&A and we will respond to those at the end of the presentation. Thank you. So hi, everybody. I can't see you, but welcome. I'm really excited to talk about movement and exercise and muscles today. So the thing, my screen won't advance. Well, that's weird. Uh, let's try this one. My screen won't advance on this platform. Okay. Uh, Give us one second and we'll take it back and do it on our end. Okay. You have it. Yeah. Yes. Good. Sorry. I apologize for that. We, I thought we checked and we were good to go. There's something about the Zoom one that doesn't. Uh, that's not what I wanted. One minute, please. Apologies, everyone. Give us just one sec for this. All right, back to the title one. <laughs> Thanks. You're good to go. All right. So I'm going to have you advance to the first one because I was just going to talk about a little bit about what my goals are. It's really just to learn a little bit about your muscles and how they can support movement. Uh, the second one is to learn about why gentle movement can really decrease your pain and help build strength. And lastly, a big part of this is going to be learning to put what we talk about in these slides into action. So we're going to move your body. We're going to do some sitting, sitting as well as standing. Okay, next slide. So talking about muscles in our bodies. The first one I'm gonna have you hit the down is like, I want people to just think about how many muscles do you think you have in your body? You have 650 muscles. So there is so much movement that goes on. How we can move our little finger, how we move our necks, how we move the toe and our big, in our, in our feet. Um, and I'm curious if people know how many bones are in the body. So if you hit the next one, there are 206 bones. So you've got 206 bones that are moving through the world and you've got 650 muscles that are moving them. And how many miles of nerves do you think are in this body of ours? 45 miles of nerves. So all those nerves connect to every little part of our body and gives us tons of information. And where does all that information go? From our big toe, knee, hip, it goes all the way up to our brains. How many neurons do you think are in our brains? 86 
billion. And to me, that is so exciting because we're constantly learning new things. We are making new connections. So there's always new things that we can learn and new ways to move. And so that piece to me is so exciting that we've got a lot going on up here that we can retrain, we can learn, we can unlearn, we can constantly change. So again, when we think of all the muscles in our body, I wanted to think about what are the strongest muscles in our body? And we've got a number of them. The heart being one of the top muscles in our body. So if you think about what that muscle does for us, a heart pumps 2,500 gallons of blood per day and beats 3 billion times in the course of an average lifetime. That is a heck of a lot of work and we can strengthen that muscle. The next muscle to think about in terms of strength is the masseter and the picture there shows that where that's located, that's a jaw muscle. So all the force that you need to bite into an apple, to bite into um, a nut, a piece of taffy, that muscle is incredibly strong and it has about 200 pounds, it can generate a force as great as 200 pounds, which is amazing to me. The soleus. Now that's the muscle, you get two important muscles in your calf, what we consider the calf muscle. The outside muscle is called your gastroc. The deeper muscle is the soleus muscle. It is really important in standing and pushing off. It does a lot of postural control. It is an incredibly valuable muscle to exercise and move because it is incredibly strong and can do a lot for you. The next one is the butt muscle, your glute maximus. This is like one of my favorite muscles in the body. It does so much for us. How we stand and get back into a chair, how we pick something off the ground, how it supports our spine. The glute muscle is incredibly important and we're gonna work a little bit on that today. And the last one, top muscles in the body is the uterus. So for those of you in the audience who don't have one, I'm sorry, but it's a pretty impressive muscle. If you think about that, it has an ability to stretch and be able to hold a baby that's growing over nine months, and then it's able to contract and push that baby out through a very small hole. It is an amazing muscle that we have in our bodies. So if we're gonna talk about the smallest muscle in our body, it is the stapes, the stapedius. It's about two millimeters long. So to me, again, it's fascinating that you can have these huge muscles and these really small muscles that are incredibly vital in our systems. So it supports the smallest bone in the, in the body called the stapes, and it's really important in your middle ear. It helps us conduct vibrations in the inner ears so that we can hear. And again, the largest, so we've done the strongest, the smallest, and the largest, the largest, is the glute max again. So that gets two titles to it. Not only is it the strongest, but it is one of the largest muscles in the body. Okay, next slide. So when we talk about muscles, what type of contractions do those muscles do for this, do for us? And this is a nice slide just to depict the different type of movements that you can do with the bones and the, what happens contraction-wise in the muscles. So PTs will talk about isotonic and isometric. So isotonic means that the length of the muscle changes as it is contracting. So if you see in that top picture, if you put a weight in your hand, when your bicep muscle contracts, the muscle shortens. But likewise, that bicep muscle can still work when you lower that weight. So think about picking up a child or a bag of groceries or moving a heavy piece of furniture or something that you're picking up. That bicep works when it is getting shortened and it's also working con control as you lower that down. So there's two ways that you can strengthen that muscle. The other way is called isometric. When the muscle is contracting, but it's not making a movement in the joint. And this becomes really important when you have a painful joint. Can I still exercise a muscle? And you can do this isometrically. So you don't have to move the joint to strengthen the muscle. And what I love about isometric exercises is that the longer you hold a contraction, the more motor units you recruit and that can build strength. So doing something for a short time is okay, but if you hold that, if you're holding that baby in your hand or holding that five pound weight in your hand, the longer you hold it for, the more of that muscle is getting involved and the more you can strengthen it. Slide. All right, so the other piece is there's different types of contractions. There's different types of muscles. And the way we sort of overall classify them is there's mobilizers, 
that help us move and there's stabilizers which give us the support at the joints. I kind of like the, I also kind of talk about them in a different way. I talk about them as in terms of like party animals and nerds. It gives you a nice way of explaining how they work. So next slide. So when we talk about mobilizers, and I call them the party animals or the jocks, these are the muscles that get all the attention. They're the big thigh muscles. They're the six pack abs. They're the people we're talking about, let me build up my guns, you know, the upper traps and the big bicep muscles. So these are what we call the prime movers. They create these big, fast, large movements. If you have to sprint, you have to lift something really quickly. The thing that these muscles do though, is they go through their energy stores quickly and they fatigue fast. So that's why I call them the sort of party animals. They can get out there, they can dance around for a short amount of time, but they're gonna fatigue and quit on you. Um, if they're not being used, if we're doing a lot of sitting or not using those muscles, if we're more sedentary, then they actually shorten, they tighten up and they contract and they atrophy, meaning they lose their muscle bulk. So you have less muscle fibers. Next slide. So the stabilizers are hugely important. These are the ones that don't get a lot of attention. They're very deep to these big mobilizer muscles. And what I like to say is they're the nerds. They're, they're deep down in the basement. They're keeping the lights on and they're keeping the music going. They're unique in that they rely on oxygen for the energy. So if you're breathing, you're gonna be able to feed these deep stability muscles. They work 24 hours a day if called on. They support a lot of your joints and especially your spinal structures. So they support the movement so you don't get a lot of unwanted movement. If you wanna bring your arm up, it's not gonna go all over the place. It's gonna stay in that joint so that the prime movers can move that arm up and over your head. But when they're not used, if you're doing, again, a lot of sitting or a sedentary life, these get weak when we don't use them. Your mobilizers get tight and lose muscle mass. Your stabilizers get overstretched and weak. Next slide. So really we need both of these, right? We can't use one without the other or we don't get a really nice um, movement pattern. So I don't have my cursor, but if you look on the left side of the screen, think of that as your spine. And that one line that you see there is your big mobilizers. So if I didn't have stabilizers, if I go to lift something up, I don't have the stability in my spine. So you're, you're gonna get undue pressure on certain areas. They're going to tweak things and it's just not going to feel good. If your stabilizers are working, those are the deep, deep muscles in your spine. They keep all those vertebrae and all those joints in play. They don't do a lot of movement other than to contract and support that spine so that when your mobilizers do move, you don't get that laxity there. They're holding that spine in place and you can get the movement you want um, from your mobilizers. Next slide. So if they're not working together, you wind up getting this muscle imbalance. If you're, so think about this in terms of you get unwanted pull, like we saw on that last slide on joints, that changes your body alignment. You have undue stress in places where you shouldn't, and it can cause pain. So really what this picture is, is just a sense of where one place is tight, it's often you'll find in the opposite area that a place is weak. So if you think about your posture overall, if I'm sitting and I'm doing a lot of sitting here and my neck's forward, all these stabilizer is in my neck are gonna get tight all those deep stabilizers in my neck are getting weak. So the mobilizers are tight, stabilizers are weak. If I go down my spine and I start looking at my shoulders, I'm doing a lot of looking at cell phones, I'm typing a lot. My big mobilizer muscles and my pecs are gonna get tight and my deep stabilizers in my back are gonna get weak. This goes all the way down your body into your hips as well. So my deep abdominal muscles, everybody thinks of you know, the outside abdominal muscles as being what we always have to strengthen. Those are your six pack abs. They are good for moving your trunk, but they don't stabilize your spine as well as the deep, deep um, abdominal muscles. You got four layers of abdominal muscles and the inside ones are what supports your spine and keep it well lined up. 
So if you're sagging in the front or your abdominal muscles aren't working, the muscles in your back get really tired and overworked. And if your abdominal muscles get weak and they're not stabilizing your spine, oftentimes you'll get low back pain because you have the imbalance between those two muscle sets. Next slide. So really what we wanna do is both. We wanna stretch and we wanna strengthen. Stretch the mobilizers, strengthen the stabilizers. And isometric exercises and gentle movement can really help us do that. We don't have to build a lot of extra weights. We can use the weight of our muscles and we can use postural movements to activate those deep muscles as well as the mobilizers. Okay, next, next slide. So how do we strengthen a muscle when we hurt? So PTs will often use this expression that motion is lotion. This is so true. When we don't move a joint, again, those stabilizers tighten, they contract, they put more compressive forces on your joint. Gentle motion allows muscles to move and stretch and do what they love to do, which is contract and relax. So they love, our bodies love to move. And when we don't move and those muscles tighten up, it causes a problem. So motion really helps keep the muscle lengths in play. And it doesn't have to be aggressive. Gentle is always the best way to start. And what I love is that even a little bit of motion can do a lot. You basically, motion brings in nutrients and it lets wastes get out of there. So that motion activates that stuff when we do that. Um, and what I often tell people is if one joint hurts, it is even beneficial to move the joint above the painful spot and below the painful spot. You can, you can start someplace further away from where it is painful and get an incredible effect on the area that's painful. All right, next slide. So again, why does gentle motion movement work? Because this concept that motion is lotion. We get more blood flow when we move our muscles. Um, it's wonderful because nutrients, like I said, come in and wastes go out. If we're not moving a muscle, a muscle still essentially poops. It sends out waste and that sits there around the muscle fibers and cells. And that can be a very irritant to all those nerve endings that are in our system. When we start to move a muscle, we move a joint, we lubricate the joints. Our muscles are able to push that fluid out, bring what I call the wastes out. And again, the nutrients in and muscles respond to movement. They are incredibly pliable and flexible if we start to move them. And the other piece to that is any motion in your body, whether you're moving a finger or moving your arm or a knee or a small part, that information travels to your brain and your brain has its own pain medicine. When you move muscles, your brain's pain medicine cabinet opens up and that will hit your system. So you really have some of the most powerful pain medications right here in your brain and you can tap into them when you start to move. The other big concept is this um, idea of hurt versus harm. And I'm gonna go into that in a little bit in the next slide, but the idea is when you're not moving or when a joint or a muscle hurts, we often think that we can't move it. But there is a difference between moving something that may be more sensitized and is registering and giving that information as if it is pain, but we're not harming that tissue. So especially in bleeding disorders, we have to be thoughtful about when is hurt okay and when is it harm? Okay, next slide. So these two gentlemen are really big um, names in the pain science education world. So Mosley and Butler. And I love this metaphor because I think it really gives um, a nice understanding of what it means to understand your nervous system and how your body works and how your body and your nervous system responds to pain and injury. So they call it sort of the twin peaks. So if you look on the left side where the, the mountain is, the idea is, is this is when you were really fit and healthy. You were active and you were moving. And there's things that you could do that just felt okay and you knew when you did too much. So that top line is called the tissue tolerance line. You could do anything up that mountain and be okay. 
Um, but there is a certain level where it's too much and you might get injury. People mostly get injured because they do something too fast or too much. So they hit that tissue tolerance. And if they go past that activity, they get hurt. But sometimes it can be that tissue tolerance line is because you've been inactive or you're inattentive to what's going on with your body. Something hurts and you decide not to pay attention to it. You ignore it. And then that prolonged aggravation can cause injury. So the line below that is called the protect by pain line. So our bodies have sensors, those 45 miles of nerves are bringing information to our brain. So generally when you're doing an activity, your muscles and joints give your brain some information that say, hey, pay attention, something's kind of bothering you. You still have an area that you can work before you have tissue damage. So that area doesn't mean that you can't work through that, but you have to be thoughtful at this point. If you work past that and go past that tissue tolerance line, then you're gonna get an injury. But that side on the left is you were pretty fit and healthy and you could do a lot before that pain and those injuries happened. On the left side is after you've had an injury, those lines change because you have to rest, you immobilize, you protect an area. Your tissue tolerance level actually decreases. You're not able to do as much as you have before. And this is also the case if even if your tissues heal and you have persistent pain, there's just changes in your nervous system. So that tissue tolerance level goes down. Now, when you do the activity that you used to be able to do, you feel that pain sooner and there is more likelihood that you will injure yourself sooner because your tissues are weaker or they haven't been able they haven't built the strength back up to, to be what they were before. So this is just a nice indicator that you can have an area that you work. You may feel something, but these lines, and this is the beauty of the bioplasticity of our bodies, these lines can change. You can work in that zone and actually change that tissue tolerance as you get stronger. You can make those lines go up higher. And again, when we think about bleeding disorders, we have to respect the fact that if we have had changes in our joints, if we do have more arthritis, maybe that line is permanently a little bit lower, but we still have a space that we can work in and build strength. Okay, next one. And one more concept I wanted to go over is that stress does sensitize the nervous system. So everybody has a level of where they'll feel pain. They can do so much before they feel pain, but it's difficult when stress enters our life. And it's not just stress at work. There's lots of things that can stress our bodies and make us more susceptible to feeling pain sooner. So if you have, I'm going to have you just hit the poor nutrition, you've got less space where you'll start to feel pain. Now you have, maybe you're feeling isolated. You haven't seen your friends as much. You are going to feel pain sooner. You're deconditioned. There's stressors at work or at home. There's this fear. Our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviors will impact how we feel pain. We have poor sleep habits. We all know that if we don't have a good night's sleep, little things aggravate us much sooner than if we have a good night's sleep. And perhaps if we're deconditioned, we're not working, we have weight gain. Now we have very little space before we feel things a lot and we and you can't move because pain aggravates it. So this idea between um, the hot pot on the right is basically saying that there's a level, if you have if you have no injury, you're doing well, it takes a lot of heat to get that pot to overflow. But if all the things are happening to your body, it doesn't take much. Your, your, your tea kettle's on a constant burn and it doesn't take much to flare that to make it boil over. Okay, next slide. So how do we turn down stress? Mindful movement. How do we get in touch with how our bodies move and what we can do? A big part of that is breath awareness. Simply drawing your breath in and feeling it come out can have a huge impact on your nervous system and settle that system down. Next slide. So what I really want to do next is try this out. We're going to do some stuff seated um, and do some stuff standing. We're doing a combination of isometrics and some movements. And I really want you to listen to your body. When I say listen, I want you to feel the sensations that are going on to your body. Be aware of them and see how they feel. If you can shift, sort of invite the sensation to see what it, what, what's going on. 
Every movement is a, is a chance to explore these sensations. So I want you to come at it like being curious and be kind to yourself. This isn't a competition. It's really a journey. We're trying to explore what's tight, what's weak, what feels good, what can you feel into and what do you feel you need to change? What can you learn about your body and how can you change it and be kind to it? So one of my favorite sayings is, this is your body. Learn to figure it out and learn to love it because where else are you going to live? This is what we want to be kind to and learn to live with. And my other favorite saying is don't give your ass a pass. So we're going to do some standing stuff and work on our butt muscles because it's the largest and strongest and has incredible ability to support our spines. I think that's the last slide. So I'm going to have you, yeah, unshare. Okay. So I can't see anybody, but what I want you to do is I'm going to move back so that you can see me sitting in the chair. And then we're going to go through um, some movements, okay? And I'm going to guide you. And the first one is a breathing exercise because we talked about de-stressing our body. So we just listened to all that stuff and now we have to get in tune with what's going on. So what I'm going to have you do is if you're leaning against the chair, see how it feels to just move away from the chair. If you don't feel like you can, that's okay. But I invite you to kind of move away from your chair. Think about taking a deep breath in and letting your body sit over your, your hips and your pelvis. Now, I also want you to think about what's going on with your neck. If your neck is way far forward, you're not going to be able to breathe very well. It's just a little bit of a chin tuck that's going to keep your head and your shoulders over your hips. So right here, right there, you're doing isometric for your deep spinal structures, holding yourself in place there. If we're scrunched like this, we're hanging on our ligaments, everything's overstretched, just that big breath in to sit over our pelvis is wonderful. Now this next piece is called a three-part breath. And again, this is just that awareness of breath because we can be so energized when we bring a breath in and we can relax when we breathe that breath out. So I'm gonna have you put both hands just about navel level and hold it there. And what I'm gonna have you do is when you breathe in, allow your belly to just expand. And then as you breathe out, let expand, relax down. It's just a softening of your belly. Your hands are the cue to where you want your breath to be. So as you take a breath in, Feel your belly rise and relax and down. Try just three breaths on your own. You can keep your eyes closed or maybe your eyes are just looking down a little bit, but the idea is can you soften your belly with the breath in and exhale and let it relax down. And have you do one more where your belly softens Expands. When you're ready, you're going to take your one hand that's going to stay on your navel, and the other one's going to come on your lower rib cage. Now, I invite you on this next breath is to soften your belly with the in breath and expand your ribs. And on the breath out, just let everything relax and fall. It's just sort of a rise of your belly, expanding your ribs. And when you do this, you're just focusing on that breath in. And out. And you may notice that you have a little bit of pause at the top of that breath in. And maybe there's a little bit of a pause after you exhale at the end of the exhalation. So it's a soft belly expansion, your ribs expand and out. Now you're gonna take that hand that's on your rib cage and you're gonna move it to just under your collarbone. This is called a three-part breath because now what you're gonna do with your breath is your belly is gonna soften, your ribs are expand, and your chest is gonna broaden as you breathe in. And then you're gonna slowly exhale and let everything sink into that chair. 
and try a couple of those on your own. Ribs belly, ribs expand, chest broadens. And I often think of this as a wave that's building and it sort of flows over my shoulders and out. And when you ex exhale, enjoy that relaxation. Let your shoulders sink and feel yourself sitting in that chair. Again, that whole expansion of the breath in. And when you exhale, you're allowing yourself to sink into that chair and everything else. Now, when you're ready, you're just gonna let your breath come back to its normal rhythm. And you may find that it's slowed down a little bit, but you still may have a pause at that infl inflammation point at the top, as well as a little pause at the exhalation. Find your rhythm and just bring your attention to that breath in and out. And that's an incredibly powerful tool you can do anytime. The three part lets you sort of focus on that breath and figure out where you're breathing. A few of those can relax your body at any time in the day. And I encourage you to do that in the morning, in the evening. If you're having trouble sleeping, you can do this in any position, standing, laying down, sitting. Sometimes it's easiest to do laying down, but I find that if I'm going to use it, I'm already sitting in my day. I just come back to that breath to relax my system and de-stress. Okay. So now we're going to start moving our bodies a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to have you have your hands on your lap. And the idea is, again, we tend to sink into our chairs like this. My neck is tight. My back is rounded. I want to get out of that bicep. I can even grab my rib cage, lift it up, and sit it over my pelvis. So I'm going to put my hands on my lap. And essentially what I'm going to do is as my hands move towards my knee, I'm going to broaden my chest. I'm going to do a little um, arch in my back. It's called a pelvic tilt. And then when I breathe out, I'm going to pull my belly button in, round my back. And I'm going to do these slow. These are basically sort of just building up some mobility in my spine. I breathe in, my hands come to my knees. I'm doing a little bit of arch. Some people say they raise their tail up. As I breathe out, I tuck my tail between my legs and pull my belly button in. And we're really going to just kind of do a couple of these. Take a breath in, your hands go to your knees. Sort of broaden my chest, arch my back a little bit. As I breathe out, I pull my belly button in and my tail between my legs. Our spines love to move and we get into patterns where we don't move them and they get really tight. So a couple of these during the day is a great way to start moving it and stretch out some muscles. Okay. And now for those of you who are still at the edge of the chair, I want you to stay there, get your feet planted and really sort of take a breath in. And again, let your Feel your butt in your chair, sink everything down in. I don't want your ears by your shoulders, let those relax. So now we're gonna put palms forward, you can't see them, but I want you to let your breath follow your hands over your head. We're gonna elongate our spine. So a big breath in. You're gonna bring your palms over your head. At this point, remember to keep your chin tucked. We're trying to stretch everything along our back. So your chin is tucked, so these are long. I'm not scrunching my neck. I might hang out there a little bit at the top and when I'm ready, Breathe out, let your breath follow the whole movement of your hands. All right. When you're ready again, palms forward, we're gonna do a couple of these. Take a big breath in, keep that chin tucked over your head. You're elongating every muscle you can. If your elbows don't go straight, that's okay. Only go up as far as you can. Don't push it. Remember being kind to your body, go as far as you can and that feels good. Breath out, palms down. That one. Okay, this one's gonna be a little different. Same movement. Check yourself. Where's my neck? Can are my shoulders relaxed down? Is my body too far forward or back? I'm still sitting at the edge of the chair. It's a constant body scan. What's happening and what feels good and what do I need to change a little bit? So palms forward. This time we're gonna take a deep breath in. It's okay if you stop 
this height, maybe you go a little further, whatever works for you, your elbows can be straight or bent. But now we're gonna climb a ladder. I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna reach a little higher for that rung above my head. And now I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. I'm stretching out one whole side of my body as I climb that ladder up. Think about your neck muscles again, keep that chin tucked and just climb that ladder two or three times, whatever feels good. If you're tired, bring those arms down. It's a small movement. All those deep stabilizers are keeping my spine in place and I'm moving some big guys very gently. Calm down. Love it. Okay, this time we're gonna do another one. We're doing a lot of spinal elongation. We spend a lot of days scrunched. So we're opening up everything. We'll let us breathe better and we'll, your spine will love you. So next one is palms forward. We're gonna bring our arms up. So you're taking that breath in. But this time we're gonna stretch out our pec muscles a little bit because they get really tight. You're gonna bring your elbows down, but this time you're gonna bring them a little behind you. So again, wherever it fits, you don't have to go super far because that's straining. Keep your chin tucked and your elbows just a little behind your shoulders or wherever it works for you. Take a deep breath in. Maybe your paws at the top of that just a little bit because we're not hyperventilating. We're listening to what our body can do. Breathe out. That one I love during the day because we're constantly tucked on front of computers or reading books. This opens up the whole front part of your chest. So we're gonna do one more. Palms forward, all the way up. Again, if your elbows stop there, no problem. If you can go higher, just invite what you can do. Now, as I breathe out, I'm bringing those elbows a little bit behind my head and my shoulders. I'm not super arching my back. This is all about the front part of my chest. It's gonna take a breath in as I go up. Maybe I pause there for a second. Come on back down. All right, so you people know yoga. We're gonna do a quick cat cow in seated, which I love. Again, palms forward, recheck ourselves. Do I have my neck checked in? Have I slouched? Do I need to take another deep breath and settle myself so my spine's in a good position? Palms forward, but this time we're only gonna bring them about halfway up so their elbows are about your shoulder height. Again, if you can't go all the way and you're somewhere down here, that is okay. This is your body, be kind to it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a breath in, but I am gonna look up to the ceiling. I'm broadening my chest. I'm giving a little bit of a back arch. My tail is up if we wanna say we had a tail. And now I'm gonna breathe out. I'm gonna bring my elbows and my hands together. Now I'm tucking my tail and I'm allowing my back to do a nice C curve and my chin is tucking in. We're just gonna do two of these. So I'm gonna breathe in now, broaden my chest. I'm gonna look up to the ceiling. My elbows are going back, kind of getting my shoulder blades together and I'm opening up my spine. And now I'm gonna breathe out. Bring those together. I'm gonna breathe in. I'm gonna come basically to my starting position and bring those arms back down again. All right, now I'm gonna add a little twist. I think, again, we spend a lot of days doing this and we don't get a lot of twists in our spine. So again, be kind, figure out how much you can do. But the important part of any kind of twist is making sure your body's not here twist. Take that breath in, settle over your hips, do that little bit of a chin tuck, let your shoulders rest. You're gonna take your left hand and put it on your right knee, keep my chin tucked, and I'm gonna look over my shoulder and only go as far as you comfortably can. Now this is where it becomes important to take that big breath in. And then when you breathe out, sink into that stretch. You don't need your jaw clenched. You don't need your shoulders up to your ears. Let those relax into that stretch. Maybe you hold the stretch for two breaths. I like pounding, feeling your breaths more than I like telling people to count because people tend to hold their breath and you energize with a breath in and you de-stress with that breath out. So feel that relaxation into that chair and let every muscle you don't need take a break. Now I'm also now at this point is having you take a breath in and breathe out and come back to center. 
So a nice way to remember how to breathe with your movements is you breathe into stillness and you breathe out when you move for this one. So now I'm gonna take my right hand, put it on my left knee. I'm gonna take a deep breath in. And as I breathe out, I'm gonna look over my left shoulder. And again, be thoughtful of where your head is. I don't want it tilted back. I wanna keep that chin tuck that lines my spine up and I'm doing that gentle little twist. And then I'm gonna take a breath in the stillness. I'm gonna breathe out and come back to the middle. We're gonna do a little neck motion next, okay? But the neck motion again, what I really want you to be thoughtful of is where is my neck in regard to my shoulders? If it's way up here and I try to look up or decide it's gonna be painful, I wanna give my spine the best line up as possible. So take a deep breath in and sit your spine. You put your elbows over your hips and then do that little bit of chin tuck because that's gonna line everything up. Now chin tuck and then look down. And come back up. Keep that chin tucked and now look up as much as you can. Again, do what's comfortable. Don't go past what you think you can do. This is all about gentle movement. I'm gonna keep my chin tucked. I'm gonna to look to the right. Keep my chin tucked. Look to the left. Chin tuck. Ear to shoulder. And that just feels so good. When you've got your ear to your shoulder, spend a little time on this one and maybe try a little movement of your head. I invite you to kind of look down, maybe look up, and you'll feel all the different fibers in your neck sort of sparkle. They sort of get activated. They're like, they could be a little bit upset. Maybe they don't like this so much. So just spend and see, like, is that okay? Am I hurting anything or do I just feel it? They kind of lighten up. And then you're going to bring your head back to the middle. It's amazing how tight those muscles get. Again, if you've got a forward head or you move there, those muscles all get tight. So again, chin tuck. And we're just going to breathe out and bring that other ear to your right shoulder. When I get there, what do I feel? Remember to relax your jaw, do a little bit of a body scan. Have I lost my seated position? Can I feel those muscles sort of like say hello? And then I sense sort of sparkle and lighten up. They're like, oh yeah, I forgot you had these. And we're gonna come back to the center. All right, a couple isometric exercises for your neck because we don't give a lot of attention to them. But again, I'm gonna tell you, you gotta sit your body up straight, get your shoulders in a good position, relax, feel your weight in the chair. You're gonna take two fingers. And again, remember my chin is tucked a little bit and I'm gonna put them on my forehead. This is how I'm gonna activate the deep stabilizers of my neck. Two fingers. Now the fingers are gonna block my head from moving. I'm gonna to try to look down. So the motion I'm trying to do is to look down, but my fingers are not gonna let me. So I'm gonna take a deep breath in. As I breathe out, my fingers are pushing back and my head's trying to go down. Isometric, nothing is moving. Deep stabilizers are starting to kick in. I can hold this for one breath in, one breath out. If you're breathing slowly, that's close to 10 seconds. Then another breath in. And as you breathe out, slowly release that. You're not trying to jerk that hand off and surprise those muscles. Now you're gonna take your two fingers and put them on the side of your head. Again, check my body alignment. I'm gonna chin tuck, and now I'm gonna turn my head to the right, but my fingers are not gonna let me. And I'm gonna push into that. I'm activating a lot of those deep neck stabilizers now. Nothing is moving, but those muscles are activating. Breath in. Breath out and slowly release. I'm gonna move two fingers to the back of my head. Now I'm gonna to try to look up, but my fingers are pushing forward and not letting that happen. So the, again, muscles are contracting, but no joint movement. Take a breath in, put a little pressure, try to move your head back and hold up there. Breath in. Breath out. Maybe you hold it for two breaths. Maybe one is enough and you slowly release. 
Believe it or not, I do this when I have long car rides because you tend to grab the wheel of the car and your head starts going forward like this. These all get tight. I do a chin tuck. I put a hand in my head. Maybe not the best thing driving, but the idea is when I activate those muscles, I feel so much better. I sort of wake everything up. I get blood flow going there. They feel better. One last one. We're going to put two fingers on the whatever side of the head you're on now. Um, I'm on my left. I'm going to turn, rotate my head to my left, get a little bit of pressure there. My fingers are not letting anything move, but those muscles are activating. And then do a little scan. Did I lose my chin tuck? Have I lost my nice trunk alignment? I'm going to check those as I breathe in. That body scan is really helpful in tuning into what's going on with you. Nice. And maybe now a few shoulder shrugs. All right, now I'm gonna, if you guys, I don't know if you at home, you have a towel nearby or you have a pillowcase or something. This is where you can get really good upper body isometric strengthenings if you just have a towel. You can do this if you come out of the shower in the morning. You can do them if you're in the kitchen and you're doing some work and you wanna take a second to wake up sort of your postural muscles. You can do it when you are get out of a car. Anyway, just grab something like a towel. So again, if you remember, what do I want you? I want you a nice alignment on your trunk. I want that chin tucked. You're going to take a towel, pillowcase, whatever you have in your hand, and you're going to tuck it against your body. Now what you're doing is pulling out, and you're simply holding that. Now when I do this, I'm doing a lot of shoulder stability and postural muscles in the back. All those muscles are activating, nothing's moving. So especially if you don't have a lot of external rotation to go through, you can still activate those muscles by pulling on this. So same thing, I'm taking that breath in and breath out. My quick body scan is, okay, my jaw's not clenched. I'm gonna relax my shoulders, although I'm feeling it there. I don't need them up by my ears. All right, still keep it going out because you'll feel this. The longer you hold it for, you're gonna fatigue those muscles because you're really using them. I'm gonna bring that out to the front and I'm still pulling outwards on that. I'm gonna continue pulling out and I'm gonna do a little bit of movement. I'm gonna maybe bring it over my head. If your elbows are bent, that's okay. I'm gonna come up here and I'm still pulling outward on this, on this towel. Maybe that's enough and I need to bring my elbows and arms down and I'm just gonna take a little relax on that and move it. But I'm gonna try one more. If that felt good, maybe I can push it a little bit more. Again, what feels good for you? I'm gonna start with my elbows tucked in and pull out here. Maybe I take a breath in, relax, and I could just see in my own picture that I had my shoulders up too high. I'm gonna bring it out. I'm gonna come up. Maybe this time I'm gonna go down and back up again. Okay, I just got the heads up that we need to... Okay, so other things you can do isometrically, you can do triceps, biceps, you can do shoulders. So if you take that towel and it's like a bow and arrow and you just pull it, I'm using different muscles. I'm using triceps on this arm. I'm using a bicep and some postural shoulder muscles there in the back. I can switch sides. I can change angles. I can bring it down. Every time I move in a different direction, I'm getting at different muscle fibers. If I just wanted to do biceps, I'm going to put one hand down here. And I'm going to use this one to pull up. So now I've got the biceps working on my left and the triceps working on my right. I can flip it. And just with that towel, I can bring the biceps now up on the left, triceps down on that one. All right. Um, I got, let's see if I can do two more really quick. I love this one because you can do sit-ups without even getting out of the chair. If you have a couch pillow somewhere around your house, grab it if you have a small pillow or even the towel that you just had or just your hands on your lap. The idea is if you put this here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from an upright position and it's isometric. I'm a lot working on the deep muscles. I don't have to go on the floor and do a sit-up like that. I can go here, put my hands on that pillow tuck my chin and all I'm doing is pushing down. So if you push into that, I'm gonna relax my shoulders, take a breath in and out and I'm doing a sit up. I can then get the diagonal muscles of my stomach if I push down 
but a diagonally, I'm gonna go push to my right knee. So I'm gonna start up straight, take a breath in, push into that pillow. And it's like I'm bringing my left shoulder to my right knee. Now I've got those deep diagonal muscles I'm working. I'm gonna relax, take a breath in. I'm gonna do the same thing going to the left, except now I'm taking my right shoulder to my left side. I can do sit-ups all day long. I can do a couple, I can spread them out during the day. I don't have to be on the floor to do sit-ups. That's a lovely way to get the abdominal strengthening done. Do I have time for one standing one? Okay, so for those of you who can, I want you to stand on up because I said we don't wanna give our ass a pass. So this is a great way to work a little bit of your butt muscles. Again, I don't have to go for a run. If I wanna activate these, what I want you to do is put your feet shoulder width apart, take a big breath in and relax so that your body is over your hips, your shoulders are relaxing, you got a little bit of chin tuck. Now, lots of times we stand like this, our bellies come out, we arch our back. So how do we fix that posture? Your butt muscle will help correct your spine. All I want you to do is squeeze your butt. That is one of the best exercises. You can do this anywhere, anytime. Hold that and just stand there. Now that is an isometric butt that will definitely get your butt stronger. It helps stretch out the front part of your hips. It actually gets you'll feel your thighs start to kick in. See if you can hold that butt squeeze for a whole breath in and a breath out. Now the beauty of the next thing is when you squeeze this butt muscle that pulls your spine in and you have another chance to do an abdominal workout, pull your belly button in because you can't walk around with your butt like this, right? So the idea is I squeeze to get my spine in nice alignment and then I pull my stomach muscles in. You've just done an isometric butt, you've done an isometric um, abdominal and you've totally put your spine in a position where it's gonna start feeling so much better. Now, this is the position that you can, again, do everything that we just did in sitting, you can do in standing. You want equal balance on both feet, squeeze your butt to set your spine, pull your stomach in. You can bring palms forward and reach over your head and elongate everything. So your starting position in standing is equal weight, a nice butt squeeze, pull in your abs to get everything lined up and you can do everything that you just did in sitting, you can do in standing. You'd progress these by then, maybe shifting to one foot and holding that position. So this leg isn't taken any weight. Again, I'm working a lot of isometric stability in my hip that way. You can squeeze one butt muscle. So these guys can get a lot of action just by standing, squeezing them, and you don't even have to move around the room, but it activates them and we can build up some muscle strength. All right, I think I might have to stop there. Um, I would love to do more. I'm always happy to. I gave Heather a lot of these exercises I've done handouts for that she'll have available. And um, there's pictures and descriptions of the breath and the movement that um, you are welcome to, to take home and, um, and practice. And my final thought is just enjoy it. Again, this is an incredible body with an incredible system, even your, your everything that you can do up here, you can relearn your muscles love to move. And I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, and, and, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, Nancy. I saw this presentation, as you know, at our Blood Brotherhood camp out um, a few months ago. And I feel like I still learned things that I hadn't that I missed the first time or they were just good reminders. And as you said, we do have handouts. I will be sending those out to you via email in the next week or so. Um, so definitely look for those, but those are very helpful and walk you through step-by-step -step a lot of these exercises. Um, we have had some questions and answers come through. So I will send these to you and then you can answer them as I present them. So the first question is, why is planking so popular? And what is your opinion about Pilates and yoga for isometric exercise? So the plank is so well loved because it works so many stability muscles. Um, it works a lot of your core, meaning your stomach muscles and your butt muscles, and then your shoulder stability. So it's a tough one to start off at because people will often, if they're weak, 
kind of do it wrong, they'll feel their back muscles hurt. And a lot of reason for that is they may be holding the position, but they're sagging in certain areas. So you really have to be thoughtful if you're gonna try a plank that you squeeze the heck out of your butt muscles because that's what's gonna support your spine and keep it up. If you feel like you've got pain in your low back, you're sagging and you're overusing those mobility muscles and you're not getting at the deep stability ones for that. I am all Pilates and I am a big proponent of yoga. Um, but again, yoga can tend to be competitive and people are often intimidated by it um, so that they come into a class and there's always somebody already doing a downward dog or Pilates, someone is doing like really, really difficult things and people feel like they have to jump to that or they fail. Um, I think those are good, but you have to build up to them and you need to get in a class that is at your level because you can really hurt yourself if you are competing with what you think the pose should be as opposed to doing what works for your body. Great. Thank you so much. The next question is, my ankles swell all the time and it appears to be arthritis and not bleeds. What exercises can I do to strengthen my ankles and reduce pain? Oh, I got, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to describe one to you right now that I love that will build up a lot of the, st the, st the deep muscles in your feet. If you're sitting in a chair and you can't see my feet, but if you're sitting, sitting with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor, what I want you to do is move, turn your foot outward. All right. Now, keep your foot on the ground and basically sort of um, drag it across the floor. That becomes a resistance for your exercise and you're building strength when you do that. So again, you're sitting upright, make sure that your shoulders aren't by your ears, take a deep breath in, move your foot out so your knee stays straight and then just draw your foot in. You'll feel the arch form in your foot as you pull that foot in. Do that a couple times and you'll feel the muscles working all the way up your leg. Do a couple on one side and a couple on the other side. Now, the other thing that I think happens with ankles is, again, when I talked about moving up the chain, it's like what supports your ankles is really good hip strength. So I would focus a little bit on those butt squeezes and then just standing and weight shifting slowly. Put a little bit, you can hold on to a chair, um, hold on to something because it's not a balance exercise, but when you shift your weight over to one leg, feel the muscles that kick into that. Squeeze your butt muscle, relax your knee, feel what's going on for your foot. If your foot is clawing the floor, you're doing too much. Relax your foot and let your knee and your hip do some of the work. So I really feel sometimes to strengthen the ankle, you have to go up the chain a little bit and strengthen your hip and your knee. But a big one is that's a super simple way to start with arthritis is just that sitting with your toe out and dragging it across that, you'll feel the arch form and a lot of the muscles in that foot activate all the way up. It's a good place to start. Great. I think we have time for one more question, which is, are there any apps you would recommend for isometric or breathing exercises? Um, I'd have to go back and look at isometric ones. I know there's a couple of really good um, mindfulness meditation apps that are out there. I'll tell you, um, there's some ones that are for kids that I absolutely love. There's one, if you just look up box breathing, it shows a picture of a puffer fish. And it, what it does is it has you take a breath in as the fish goes up. It's a nice visual to have your breath coordinate with what's going on. And then the puffer fish stays there and you just kind of follow the area. It's called box breathing. That's a nice way to start. Um, but I will tell you my favorite um, breathing, and I think I think there's some that are free, like Calm and Insight Timer are two mindfulness meditation apps that are really good, that there's a lot of choices in there. The one that I love the most is called 10% Happier but it, it's a fee associated with it. I think there's some free options with it, but if you want more detail, you have, it's a, it's a 
you have to pay for it. It's the one app that I've actually paid for and I renewed it because I love it so much. It gives you a lot of the science of meditation and the breathing exercises. So I think it takes you on a different journey. It's that mindfulness and awareness, which helps me um, learn about my body and what I can do. It's a wonderful, wonderful app that talks about the science of what happens in your brain when you meditate, what happens in your stress levels and levels of happiness when you work on mindfulness and meditation and breath awareness. All those um, meditation and is an incredible opportunity to do like a bicep curl for your brain. And Building up that sort of mental awareness has been, you know, kind of what I would say is life changing for me. So, if I were to recommend one app that talked about breath awareness and meditation, it would be 10% happier. Um, and again, there's a prescription level to it. And then I think there's a, a, a free level that just introduces you to it. It's a good place to start. But the free ones are like Calm and Insight Timer. I don't have a good isometric app that I've um, that I know, but that I can start looking around and I'll let Heather know if I find a good one. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nancy. I really enjoy listening to you talk and getting to participate in the exercises and it's just fantastic. Um, we do have a survey that will launch once you close out from the webinar. If you could take a moment to, to answer those questions, that would be incredibly helpful for us. We have reached time, but quickly before we go, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. We have a newly um, designed website at HFA. If you go onto the website, you will see the information to log into our upcoming webinars. Um, Jeanette, you will see just posted the next webinar is Advances in Diagnosis and Management of Von Willebrands that Dr. Flood will present in February. Um, we try to have one. We will have one every month with the exception of April, which is when we have our National Conference Symposium. Um, symposium registration will open in a couple of weeks, um, and it's a wonderful opportunity to get to see some subject matter experts um, like Nancy and others who will be there to be able to help us provide education and support and, um, and advocacy skills to the community and just have some community building time. So um, again, the, the website is in the chat. Thank you, Jeanette. And if you go there, you'll learn more about all of the wonderful upcoming events as well as be able to register for symposium when it opens in a couple of weeks. Um, but in the meantime, again, I wanted to say thank you so much again to Nancy. Always a pleasure. It's wonderful to interact with you. And I will send the uh, survey slides. No, I'm sorry. I will send the exercise slides in a week or so and the survey will launch at the end. So thanks again. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Mm -hmm.